In a diary entry for August 5th, 1934, the German novelist Thomas Mann, sensitive to the atmosphere of increasing political disquiet, wrote the following. A cynical egotism, a selfish limitation of concern to one's own personal welfare and one's reasonable survival in the face of the headstrong and voluptuous madness of history is amply justified. One is a fool to take politics seriously, to care about it, to sacrifice one's moral and intellectual strength to it. All one can do is survive and preserve one's personal freedom and dignity. Now, this idea that we can retreat from the onslaught and flux of history has a fairly long precedent. Voltaire's garden is a famous example of it. We should retreat into our own private gardens and cultivate our own personal lives. He gave that line in his novel to a Muslim character and the walled garden has a long history in Islamic thought as a place of seclusion that shelters and protects us from the outside world. But the answer to this, why shouldn't we just retreat into our own private gardens, into our private lives, is given in a passage in Plato's Laws where he says that ultimately the good who refuse to engage in politics end up ruled by the evil. And that is the answer to man. Now to understand why, let's turn to Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics again in book 10, chapters 7 to 8. He outlines what happiness consists in for a human being. Remember, he defines man as the rational animal. And from this definition, he arrives at the conclusion that for a rational animal, the highest form of life is one which most closely imitates the divine being, rationality itself. So he conceives of God as a being who enjoys the pure, uninterrupted pleasure of pure thought or contemplation. And the closer we as human beings can get to imitating that, the happier we will be. So this he defines as theoria, contemplation or study. Everything else is subordinate to that, including, of course, politics. Now, why isn't theoria subordinate to anything else? Well, it's not pursued as a means to an end. When you have already acquired the theoretical wisdom necessary for a deep, comprehensive understanding of life, then theoria is the activity of contemplating it. Obviously, such a life is still going to include some form of relaxation or amusements. It's not going to be purely incessant philosophizing. You're not actually a god, even though you're trying to get as close to one as you can. But the point of that relaxation, the point of those amusements, is merely to regenerate you for a return to further contemplation. Now, the ethical virtues, prudence, for example temperance. Those function merely as means to an end. They matter because without them you are unlikely to be able to sustain the conditions necessary for a contemplative life. If you destroy your mental and physical health with reckless living then theory is going to be very difficult for you to achieve. Politics is also subordinate to the philosophical life. And this is because, essentially, in Aristotle's view, politics is always remedial. You practice it when something is going wrong. It fixes problems. And the virtues that it uses are also, in that sense, remedial. Courage, for example, is exercised in war. So we can think of this as being a way of saying that politics responds to problems, no problems, no politics, and therefore all its pleasures are always mixed with pain. Pure, unalloyed pleasure isn't something that exists in the political realm. But although the political life isn't sufficient, that's not to say that it's unnecessary 
and Aristotle is clear that the philosophical life, the life of theory, contemplation, study, depends on the willingness of at least some people to practice the political life. This is because of the necessity of legislation. Human beings need communities with good laws to encourage good habits. Only in an appropriate community is the well-lived life possible because as rational animals, we are also social animals. And when this is imperiled, then the philosophical life is also going to be imperiled. So ultimately, Politics is necessary because the garden of contemplation is worth defending. As Pope Gregory the Great put it, those who wish to hold the fortress of contemplation must first of all train in the camp of action. This also recalls von Clausewitz's view that war is politics pursued by other means. Polemical comes from the Greek word polemos, meaning war or strife. And this should remind us that conversely, politics is war pursued by other means. We began with a quotation from a German. Let's end with another from Sebastian Hafner's memoir, Defying Hitler, written in 1939. No, retiring into private life was not an option. However far one retreated, everywhere one was confronted with the very thing one had been fleeing from. I discovered that the Nazi revolution had abolished the old distinction between politics and private life, and that it was quite impossible to treat it merely as a political event. It took place not only in the sphere of politics, but also in each individual private life. It seeped through the walls like a poison gas. Gas will expand to the limits of whatever container it is put in. A totalitarian political ideology recognises no limits to the political. The distinction between political and personal is no longer respected. Ultimately, there is no personal. And the political battleground includes each individual private life.